Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Move Forward Anyway podcast, featuring dream accelerating inspiration. I'm Jeff Meyer, your host, author, entrepreneur, and coach. My goal with this podcast is to help you identify and clarify your own dream by taking wisdom from others' successes and challenges. If you're looking to take action on your dream, to make a difference doing something you love, but your fears are holding you back, then this podcast is for you. If you're interested in finding additional support, you can also check out my Dream Accelerator coaching program designed to help realize your full potential and reshape your future. As always, you can learn more about my Dream Accelerator program at jeffmeyer.org. Using my Dream Accelerating Formula, heart-centered entrepreneurs can focus on their dream, name their fears, change their mindset, define their next, and move forward anyway. Welcome back, fellow dreamers, to another episode of the Move Forward Anyway podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Meyer. It's really good today uh, to be with two new friends, Paige and Beth. Uh, They're rivals, I just found out. if you're watching the video, you'll see there's a Florida Gator fan, and uh, then there's someone else on this call that's a Georgia fan. So SEC is well represented as a Big Ten fan. That's a little unnerving to me, but we'll hey, do I'm, it. We're also we, we're also big. We're Michigan fans, so oh, you know, Big Ten is, is that's big not, in my that's house. Not good. <laughs> oh, that's not good. We're in Badgerland here, so oh, uh, hey, at least you did oh. not say OSU. <laughs> oh yeah, we can agree. We can agree on no Ohio State cheering Definitely. going on here today. You guys, it's so great that you're here with us today. Thank you for sharing your story with our listeners. Why don't you take a moment and just introduce yourselves? Um, I already gave away that you love uh, college football, um, but introduce yourselves. Tell us about uh, family. Um, where you live, anything you want to share. Sure. Well, I'm Beth Moffitt, and I live in Marietta, Georgia. Married for, I don't want to even tell you how many years, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and I have two grown daughters. The first one is, the oldest is married and has two adorable grandchildren, a five and three-year-old. And mm. the other is not married yet. Um, and she serves as a minister at her church and, um, that, that's, that's who I am. I'll let Paige tell you a little bit about herself. Awesome. Yep, I, Thank you. I'm Paige Risley. Uh, my husband and I live on Lake Oconee, which is kind of halfway between Atlanta and Augusta. We have two grown sons. Um, our oldest is married and has, um, the most adorable grandson that we could imagine. Our younger son is um, a PE teacher and coach. He coaches three sports, football, basketball, and soccer. So that child is busy. Um, he's not married, but, you know, we have high hopes for the near future that it's happening because <laughs> he's got someone in his life that we really like. So, But there's no pressure, right? You're not putting None any whatsoever. pressure. whatsoever. No pressure. Nope. <laughs> Let's just say that his sister-in-law and myself have not threatened to disown him if he messes it up. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. I love it. Thank you so much. So um, we're going to talk about we recruit well. That's the business that you guys have started. Tell me about how you guys know each other. Where did you guys meet? That is the part of kind of the fun part of our of our business. We actually we met when Paige was my oldest daughter's seventh grade teacher. And then we ended up teaching together for several years and just enjoyed, um, enjoyed that experience. And then we both, both of our, both of us have husbands who travel quite a bit. We wanted to do something where there was a lot more flexibility and we discovered this whole world of, of working virtually. And we jumped into the virtual world um, and ended up working for a large staffing company uh, that, um, that provides virtual assistance. And it's kind of where we cut our teeth on learning how to recruit and recruit well. So that that's, I guess, our is that a good enough example of our, uh, our journey together, Paige? Pretty much. We've known each other for about 20 years. So <laughs> that's awesome. So Paige, you are an educator. Um, yes, we both were. Still actually. are. You're still using all yep. those skills. I'm sure yep. of it. Yep. Wow. And 
and the desire to explore a, a virtual work, which probably gave you more freedom um, than being an, yeah. an educator, I would yeah. imagine you probably pursued that. And that's where you uh, cut your teeth as, as uh, Beth said, um, very interesting. So you work for this, uh, this large company um, and why aren't you still working for this large company? What happened? Yeah, for me, um, for both of us, it really was, we re we thought there was a better way of doing, of doing what we were doing, of providing assistance for medium, for, for small business owners. Um, and in that, in that realm of going to an agency to find help for your, for your business, um, they're acting as a middleman and it's a long term relationship with that company. And if you're a smaller business owner, you can't afford their fees. You can't afford that $50, $60 an hour rate to, to pay somebody to come into your business on a fractional time frame when really in reality, that person's getting paid between $18 and $30 an hour. So as a small business owner, you know, we're cutting out that long-term middleman. We're just going to, we just charge a, a smaller fee to find you that person. And then they're your person. You don't have, you don't pay us long-term. So we just mm. felt there was a, there was a better way of doing it. Um, and then for me personally, um, you know, that wasn't the main reason that we both left that company. Um, I, um, my family, we experienced with our younger son, um, a cancer diagnosis at age 24. And oh, wow. that going through that experience for me and my family, it really, why, what am I doing? What is my purpose? Why am I working 40, 50, and sometimes 60 hours a week for a salary for, I mean, I loved the company and I loved what I did, but, you know, I, I could do more and I can do better. And that just really brought me to that realization is that this isn't where I want to be. This isn't what I want to do. And if, I, if I'm going to do this, I want to do it my way and I want to do it on my terms. Mm -hmm. So for me, that was, the, that was what catapulted me into that decision of leaving. Yeah, I love that um, you, there, there's a couple of things in there that through pain was a greater awareness of your, your calling and your purpose mm -hmm. and being in charge instead of working for someone else's business yes. and there's a gap that you were filling um that wasn't you saw a product that you were working in but you thought you could do it better so many entrepreneurial journeys start that way yeah. so if you're listening to this if you see something that you're working in but you know you could do it better or do it differently mm -hmm. that's a great indicator of something you might be able to start um to to improve on that product, mm -hmm. make it more cost efficient, give more direct connection with the, the virtual assistant, for example, than to work with the big company. Mm -hmm. That's how dreams are started. That's awesome. Yep. Um, and do you want what do you want to add to that, Beth? What's your story? Why did you both uh, leave this big company together at the same time, or did you leave separately or? We did leave separately. I, I left a little before she did. I was more in the, the, the working with clients and it, I, I struggled with it because I, I saw these small businesses, nonprofits, um, entrepreneurs paying these really high prices for really good assistance. And I just felt like there had to be something better. And so I kind of pulled away before she did. And then when she kind of went through her experience together, we sat down and said, we can do this. We really wanted to give people a more personal hands-on experience. We also wanted more versatility because we were kind of locked into that virtual assistant um, row. And now, mm. now we can work with people who need hybrid, who need remote, who need in-house. We can help a small business owner find, like we're, we're working right now on someone, an office manager. And it's in a smaller town. They're struggling. They're struggling a little bit finding the right fit for them, and it it just allows us to come along beside them, help help them out, have a more personal experience. We want we're trying to serve people in a greater way, and and that's what this has really allowed us to do. I love that. Do you work uh, nationally, or do you are you pretty much uh, locally? We do. Nationally. I think right now we have clients. 
California, Colorado, uh, South Carolina, they're everywhere. So it's, it's fun Wonderful. because you meet tons of people from all over the country. Mm -hmm. And because a lot of them do end up wor working, you know, finding someone virtually to work for them. We're talking to, you know, young moms or people who are just coming out of the work world who want, who want to work more from home everywhere. Big cities, small towns. It's it's really a, a fun experience. So you you're doing a lot of the same things I'm doing in terms of helping helping entrepreneurs launch a dream business. Yes. Um, what? So I'd like to ask you a question. So, what are the common themes that you see for these new entrepreneurs that are launching their business in terms of um, the reason why they're launching their business? What kind of stories would you share? What what repeated reasons or motivations are you seeing for people that are starting their businesses? I think a lot of it is they just want to they want to have something for themselves. They want to be more more in charge of their day to day. They want to be more in charge of when I'm when I'm working, when I'm doing what I'm doing, um, having the flexibility. Um, most of them are um, are are women. Um, who also are balancing family mm -hmm. and work. Mm -hmm. And so they're 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 wrapping a business around a life that they're they're trying to fit them and mesh them together. And so most of what they're looking for is um if they they need help, not just in their business, but they need help managing their household schedule yeah, and the whole bit and fitting it all all together. Um yep. so yeah, I mean. I think that's the biggest thing of what what we're seeing as as to as to that why. Anything you would add to that, Beth, in terms of the motivation or the why? Things that well, you've I, seen. I do think that is a lot of what we see, and 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 I know she said she said women moms, but we see it with with husbands too. Mm -hmm. They're saying, "I just need more time with my family, and I mm -hmm. I want to be in my business, but I don't want to be so up in it all the time. I need to." I need to, you know, get rid of some of the smaller things. Maybe it's just find someone who's a really good project manager so that I can stop project managing all the time and actually dream in my business. Mm. That's awesome. And that's what I do with the Dream Accelerator. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it too. Um, people are tired of working for someone else's business, someone else's dream. And they're they're wondering, what's my dream? And some people come to me and they say, I I don't think I have one, but then they discover that they actually do. They just know they need to do something different. Others have had a dream for years, but they've just pushed it aside or squished it and pushed it down because they just need to make a living. And they say, one day, one day I might do that. And I'm saying, um, let's turn that one day into day one and let's start taking that journey together with the support of community and um mm -hmm you know, the skills and resources you're going to need. So that's awesome. Um, so tell me, uh, when you left this big company separately, but close, and you started talking to each other about maybe we could do this better. We can do this, as Beth said. Um, what kind of second voices popped into your head? And what I mean by second voices is you get a first voice that says, let's do this. We can do this. Right. And then very quickly, a second voice comes in, but <laughs> you don't know enough or you yeah. don't have enough resources or you're just fooling yourself. All that second voice head trash that talks us out of our pursuit. What kind of second voices did you have rumbling around in your head that you had to confront? I, I, I know for, for, for a fact, Ours was, we are not salespeople. And in order to do what we had to do, we had to sell. In fact, we made the mistake. And I don't know if it was really a mistake, but we started right before COVID. So when we got our first client, COVID hit, we pushed the pause button and we had we had a salesperson. And that uh, and for us, it was good because it allowed us to take that pause and reconsider some things. And what we realized is we couldn't really afford a salesperson. Mm -hmm. We were going to have to suck it up and figure out how to sell. 
Fortunately, we have two amazing husbands that said, you guys can do this. They believed in us. They kept saying, you sell mm. every day. We hear you on calls. You, you can do this. Um, so for, for absolutely for sure, they said, you need to get in there and figure out how to sell. And then we realized we're really just selling ourselves because we're trying to convince somebody to believe that we can help them. And once we realize that, then we both now, I don't think anything at all about getting on a phone call with someone, a, a lead. Um, I, it, it doesn't, I, does it phase you, Paige? Cause she's, she's, I'm more the extrovert. She's more the introvert. So, and we are kind of, yeah. we call, mm -hmm. we say if people who aren't, who are, are, are not watching, but listening, we call ourselves salt and pepper because I've got dark hair and she has this. I love it. Lady. You can see it on the screen. It's just great. Salt gorgeous, and pepper. Gorgeous gray it. hair. She's prematurely right? gray. White. It's white. Old. It is white. We don't use gray. It, it's white. It's white. It's white. It's so white. we are salt and pepper. We are each other's. I mean, we are back and forth each other. It, it's God just put us together perfectly mm -hmm. um, for this business and just mm. gave us each amazing abilities. But that was one area we felt like we were very deficient. But but the Lord's shown us that we can do it. We absolutely can do this. I still have to psych myself up for sales calls. Like Beth said, I am more introverted and I, I, I do have to, okay, you can do this. I'm also an Enneagram six. So worst case scenario. Um, so before I've even got on the call, I know they're going to say no. And so what am I going to do? And I mean, it's, that's mm. how my brain processes, but um, back, I want to go back to what Beth said about when COVID hit and we had the salesperson, um, I'm the back end, all the, I love all that kind of nitty gritty and the processes and the, all that stuff. So I, during that time, read the book profit first mm -hmm. and two chapters in I'm calling Beth and I'm like, just an FYI, we're totally redoing everything. So just hang on. And the first thing that's going to happen is we're done with the salesperson because we're not giving them 20% anymore. We're done. We're going to suck it up and we're going to learn how to do this. <laughs> And that was, that was a game changer for us because from that point, I think it was more 2021 when we started doing profit first and started paying ourselves first, putting it in a different account, taking that money out and moving it in. And we actually then started seeing some return to ourselves. Now, granted in, in, in 2020, it was a, you know, we were, we were just glad to break even. 2021, we started seeing some profits and we were paying ourselves and now it's a regular basis. So watching that growth just eased all of those things in, in my head that were worst case scenario, that were what if, what if, what if, well, you can't do this. Well, yes, we can, because 2022 is absolute proof that you know what you're doing and you're good at it. So. And you started right during the pandemic. Too, yes. which... I'm sure there was all kinds of fears. What are we doing? We just gave up our, our nice, comfortable yep. um, catch-all job, and we're launching a new business. I launched my Dream Accelerator in the first iteration was 2018, 2019, and then COVID hit, and I had to decide, do I keep going? Do I just shut it down? Yep. Mm -hmm. And I had to yeah. rethink the whole model yes. because don't get so wrapped up in one model because yep. a pandemic yep. can hit and you got to be able yep. to flex. So, wow, yep. that is, that is awesome. Mm -hmm. So um, that, that is a real uh, fear. Mm -hmm. We don't know how to sell. How are we ever going to grow this new business if we don't know how to sell? Mm -hmm. Talk to us a little bit about how you learned how to sell. And the fact that most entrepreneurs don't know half about what they're doing when they start. Um, you start and you learn as you go. You, you can't wait till you learn it all. I'm sure there's lessons, things you're learning right now that you didn't know two years ago, right? So how did you learn about selling because this is one of the things I run into with the Dream Accelerator all the time. People are afraid to sell. So they'd be very interested in hearing how you learned how to sell. By the way, introverts can be great salespeople yeah. because they listen well. And most salespeople fail because they talk over clients instead of probing to understand what they really need. 
Paige, I see you shaking your head. So be affirmed in your introvert yeah. status. Um, how did you learn how to sell? And talk about the learning process as you go. Yeah. For me, the, the, it wasn't necessarily learning how to sell. Um, it was, it was two things. It was again, like Beth said, our husbands, um, my husband and I, um, share an office space. And so he literally sits close to me and hears me talk to other people about what I do and how I do it. And when I'm talking, interviewing people or talking to a client or, or anything, and he would repeatedly say, it's not about selling. It's the passion you have for what you do and how you do it. And that's what mm -hmm. people hear. So you're not, it's not that I'm selling you oceanfront property in Arizona. I'm telling you why I'm passionate about my, my business and our process and why I'm going to be passionate about you and your business and helping you. So yeah. that, that was the first thing. The second thing for me, especially starting a business and trying to get the systems and the processes and the application set up and all the different things that you need, you know, you're giving everybody your email address or you're making connections on LinkedIn and the constant emails and the constant LinkedIn messages and the, 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 the spam that you get. I was over it. And I was like, we're not doing that. We aren't going to just inundate somebody after we get a lead and it's a, they don't say yes or they don't say no. We're not going to pester them. And it took us, I mean, we just, we've been in business since 2019. We started spring of 2019 very slowly. Hmm. So it's been a very slow process, but we just this past summer put into effect what they call a, a sales drip campaign for when we meet with someone and we don't hear back, we drop their name in a, in an yeah. email sequence. And that yeah. email sequence is very give friendly. We give them more than we ask. So yeah. because we don't want to be that pest, we yeah. want to add the value and not ask them, Hey, don't forget about us. Come to us. We're what you need. We don't want to sell ourselves. We want to give them more than we're asking for them. Yes. So when they're ready, they know they need something. They already have proof that you can provide insight and help to them. That's awesome. Yep. I, I'm curious, what do you use for your uh, your CRM? Um, we use, again, I'm that back end person along with a financial person. We use Zoho One um, because it's pretty cheap. <laughs> Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, and it works for our needs. It has everything it, we need in it. Yes, it does. Yeah. It does CRMs. It's a sales pipeline. It it is a books like QuickBooks. It's got a, a, a Zoho Books aspect. It's got a marketing drip campaign aspect. Um, it's got a project management. It's an applicant tracking system. And we don't use all those features. We use other things as well. But for what they charge and for what they provide, it it has it's amazing. It's been awesome. perfect for us. It has. It's working. We could geek, we could geek out on all the back end stuff right now because probably <laughs> I love I love exploring that. I've been through so many different programs. Um, that's awesome. How would you uh, How would you add to that, Beth? I I think the biggest thing that I do, and and I know Paige does this as well, is is when I get on a call, the first thing I want to know is what is your need? I want to hear them out. I, I, I never start with what we can provide because yeah. how can I know what we can provide till I know where the gaps are for them? So right. when I sit on that call, it's, it's all about, tell me about your business. Tell me about what, where, where are the problems? What, what are the issues? Because one of the things that we do provide that's maybe a little bit different from some other recruiting firms is once we get them um, in, and we find that perfect candidate and they make that offer and they are off to the races, we don't leave them alone. We hang with them for 90 days. We check in regularly to see how things are because we do want to coach uh, along as, as we go. Paige is Enneagram certified. I'm just certified. We can, we, we both are well versed in all the tech things out there. If they're struggling with project management or they're struggling with task management, or maybe they just don't even know where to start delegating. We do have some tools that we can use to help them 
um, get that person up and going. So we, if we don't get all that on the front end and know where, where the issues are, we can't help them through the process and we can't help them after the process. Mm, that's great. So you're with them for 90 days and then it's just the relationship between the business owner and their teammate, their, their new teammate, right? Absolutely. So you don't keep, you don't, and that's the difference from the big company that you used to work for is there's always that middle person that was overseeing and really the relationship was with that company, not the individual yep. worker. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how you've improved on that process. And there, there's the new business. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you didn't know how to sell. That was a little bit freaky. Other fears that you dealt well, with. You have going to talk about your big fear for this year. Cause we took, we took a huge leap of faith this year. Oh, wait, wait yeah. a second. So you have fear now after oh, two yes. years in the business? Oh, Paige does. So, I'm not a fear. Oh, I, I oh, do. Okay. I That's constantly. all the fears for me. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I have them all for everybody. Oh, yeah. yeah. All I was for like, everybody. oh, yeah, I can do that. Oh, you we have enough can fear for everybody? <laughs> yes. No, so we have been we had been toying with the idea from the very beginning that um, we wanted to go to the Entree Leadership Summit. Um, that's a huge cost, huge cost. Um, we knew those were the types of people we needed to connect with. That those were some of the business owners we could help. Um, so we we've wanted to go for a while. So this year, um, we had the money. Well, we kind of had the money. <laughs> <laughs> because for two of us, I mean, it was an outlay of money and we ended up having to dip into, you know, our profit first, our owner's account. We had to dip into our money that we were going to pay ourselves in a couple particular months in order to pay to go to Entree Leadership in May of 2023. So we haven't even been yet. So I called Beth. We had a discussion. We talked about it. We decided, okay. Let's do this. So we we signed up and we had had clients coming in on a regular basis. And so the May payment was good or the June payment was good. The July payment was good and August hit. And I'm like, oh, I'm just, I'm just like, I was sick at my stomach. I was sick at my stomach because we had the money, but it was money that we were going to pay ourselves. It was our money that we weren't yeah. getting paid now for all this work that we did, but I'm letting it go. It is what it is. Um, in the middle, in middle, after that payment came, mid August, my husband and I had um, pretty much from mid August to the end of September, my husband and I were at home for about ten days, between his traveling and some vacations that we had planned and other family obligations we had. And between what was it, September fifteenth, September tenth, through about September twentieth, we signed four clients, and instantly all that money plus more came back. Yep. And there's no other explanation other than God somehow stepped in and so just step of faith. And so we're just, I'm just faithful it. to you. And we've, mm -hmm. I mean, we've had, we've obviously, we've had the best year we've ever had this year. We're just, we're wrapping up probably the most clients we've ever had at one time. And it's just, it's just, I, I it was exciting to me to know that we did something. We thought God said, definitely said, this is something yep. you guys need to step out on faith and do. It's something you've always wanted to do, and we did it. And and not that God's always going to show up in that way, but He did for us this mm -hmm. year. Yeah. yeah, I think also Beth, you do have you've always had a fear, and your fear was we couldn't handle more than two or three clients at one time. And and ah. it's eight right now. <laughs> in the last two months, we've learned we can handle eight at one time and not lose our minds. <laughs> we have a great yeah. Effort. <laughs> and what about what about 16? What about 24? And now you start talking about scalability and, and all of those And you know, issues. and honestly, <laughs> what that's what we talked about this morning was that yes, we can see that even more than eight, there's a way for the way we run things now and how we do things and our processes without adding team members, we can definitely do even more than what we did. So yeah, definitely. Wow. Um I loved how I loved how uh, Paige called out Beth's fear, um, <laughs> and Beth called out Paige's uh, reservation or fear. And isn't that how it works? We can see the fear in other people, but we don't have a, a very good way of seeing it in ourselves. And 
Um, I love in my Dream Accelerator program when people have aha moments about how fear has been actually impacting them. No one likes to admit that they're afraid, especially in this culture. Well, I'm strong. I can do it. But deep down, there's all kinds of things that get a, get in the way. Businesses struggle mostly not because of external pressures or obstacles, but by the internal stuff we bring to the table that we need to learn how to deal with. And listeners, did you hear what they said? Two years in, they're still battling some fears that come up. Um, so fear, we talk, you never get rid of it. It's always there at some level lurking. We, le- we need to learn how to leverage it and use it yeah. for momentum moving forward. So that's awesome. Okay, so I want to hear about some of these clients without divulging any personal information. Tell me, what are what are some of the dreams that you're helping make happen in the world because of the work you're doing? Tell me about your who's. Um, who are you helping? What are they up to? You go ahead, Beth. You, you. <laughs> You're, yeah. I'm, I'm more the client facing person, although I will say that Paige has started stepping out of her comfort zone <laughs> and being more client facing because we've had, to, as we've had so many, it's like, okay, you got to take that one. Um, I, I think our, our clients, um, most of them are really trying to, to scale their businesses. They're trying to get out of the weeds. And um, a lot of times they just don't know how they, they, you know, they're, they're profitable, they're doing well, but they're so bogged down in the day to day that it, it, it's, it's overwhelming a lot of times Mm -hmm. and, and really finding, it's not just finding someone with great skills because we tell them all the time, you can train people how to do what you need them to do. If they're smart, Mm -hmm. it's really about finding the people to come along beside them, to really serve them, to be their helper um, so that they feel comfortable and can trust them very quickly. Um, th- that's just a lot of it. It's, it. And it is building trust. We have to, clients have to trust us to find yeah. those people. So it's about building trust within your sphere of influence, just throughout mm. whoever that is, whether it's the people that they're serving themselves as, as their clients or the people that they're on their team. Beautiful. And what are they doing? What What is their business? Tell me some of the businesses you're helping. What well, are their mission? Because we're educators, we we do we do serve um, some people who are in, in education that have been in, okay. uh, in that realm. Somehow we do not, we're not real sure how it happened. We stepped into the interior design uh, industry and we really worked with a lot of interior designers we're not interior okay. designers ourselves, but we just understand a lot of their needs and we've been uh-huh. successful in that, uh-huh. in that industry. And it's, you know, how war gets around. <laughs> so that's, that's uh-huh. the industry for us. We have um, uh, some coaching clients, people who do some coaching. That's, that's huge because they're kind of lone wolves uh, a lot of times yeah. and they're trying to, to do it all on their own uh, and finding that business manager to help them take the load off has been huge. Mm. Uh, we've had, we had some IT people. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. We don't speak their language quite as well as maybe we speak some of the other languages, but we understand where the, where the issues are yeah. in business period. So we've even, we've even done it. We've even served a church as well, helping yeah. them find not only an administrative position, but, to help them find fill even church staff positions as well. Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. Yep. That, That's and that exciting. Was, that yeah, was a new well, one. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah that that was something that you know we didn't originally think was going to happen. Um, and even in that interior design world, you know, we're helping them find project coordinators and project managers and administrative assistants. But we're even looking for an interior designer right now, which is something that's new. Um, And same thing with the church world. It's like, you know, we don't want to do church staffing, but somehow we ended up doing it. And and I think what we're learning is that it's not about it's not so much about the position you're looking to fill. It's the connection with the people. We're looking at what kind of a person do you want? You know, we can Mm. vet the resume. We're taking all of that away from you. We're taking hours of creating job descriptions, interview questions, posting it, managing it, vetting it, doing phone screens and deciding who. 
And we're taking 300 people down to the best five that we found. And then those are the only five you have to see. And so that, when you look at it that way, it doesn't matter what we're hiring for because it's all about the people. Mm. Yeah. And so you mentioned earlier, uh, DISC, you threw out DISC, and you're not familiar with what we're talking about, DISC profile and Enneagram. I'm an Enneagram four, by the way. My wife mm-hmm. is a seven. So we we say that I'm Eeyore and she's Tigger. And how <laughs> how does a marriage between e, Eeyore and Tigger work? Well, sometimes it doesn't work. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> But no, it, it works really well, actually. Mm-hmm. But you got to know these things. Yep. Um, so you use these kind of tools in the process okay. to vet, find right connections. Is that true? We do. We, we, do. we do. I think we're, we're always looking for someone who aligns with their values, with the business or church mm-hmm. or nonprofit values in a way, because that that is above everything. Um, and if they do, if they do align with their values, then it's usually, it usually goes well. I'm not saying that that's the person that they hire, but um, we get it right more often than not. Yep. I mean, the hiring process is just wrought with challenges and missteps, right? I mean, mm-hmm. it's an imperfect science, yep. even if you've got a great system, because it's, it, 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 it's still, it's still with people, right? Yep. Um so what are your biggest challenges coming up in 2023 um, besides uh, going to Entre Leadership? That is your big thing that's happening in May. That could open up a whole new world of possibilities for you guys. I know that's why you're doing it. What is what is your big, uh, hairy, audacious goal in 2023 going to be? That's... I don't know if it's 2023. Well, okay, for 2023, I would say that big audacious Harry goal would be pretty much doubling our revenue for for what we did this year. That's been our pretty much our goal every year from from the start. We want to we want to double. We want to double. We want to double. So next year, it's all about doubling. And the one I would say again, fear that that I that is a constant for me in our business would be we do not have a recurring stream of income. So that th- those big companies, those big staffing firms that maintain that relationship, that's a recurring stream of income for them. We don't have yeah. that. You got for 90 a- days and then you got to get yep. a new, you got to get a new batch. We So we have always got to find a new client. We have to find the net, who, who's the, who's next, what's coming. How are we finding them? And they're doing that too. However, they're, when they get a client, they're maintaining that stream of income and ours ends after we finish the project. So that's, you know, that's the big next thing for January is where are these clients going to come from? Who needs our help? How we, we, we got to, you know, we've got to get our blogs to hit them. We've got to up our social media game, you know, how we got to spread the word. We've got to get referrals out there. Um, and then a long-term big, hairy, audacious goal would be, or however you said that, <laughs> our both of our hus- both of our husbands are very you know close within five to eight ten years of retirement. Um, I am a good. I am a couple years younger than my husband, and he wants to retire before Medic- Med- Medicare kicks in. So our goal is we want to be providing health insurance for our families. For when that time comes, so that our husbands can retire on their terms and not on a medical insurance term timeline. Yeah. Mm. Wow. I love how there's not just business goals, but there when you're an entrepreneur, there's also there's also personal and household goals that, that mm. wrap into this. And that's good. You, you, we need to talk about this and and um, and plan for it and work towards it. I love how your business ventures are giving back to your households and to your husbands. Um, that's one of the ben- the benefits of it. Yep. Uh, so doubling. And what about recurring revenue? Have you thought about what that might look like in your business? 
We have. And every time we start thinking about it and every time we literally start sitting down to, you know, write a course, um, create a podcast or to do what it is we think would be that next step. Um, we, we start, it, it's like, God says, no, wait. And here come four clients <laughs> right. or here okay. comes. So every time, every time we sit down, I mean, we've, I, I think we've got, you know, we've got it. We've got a deck started for a course. We have a curriculum that we've started writing for a course. And um, it, it got literally put on a shelf earlier in the spring when we started having a steady two clients consistently every month. And so it's almost, you know, like God just telling us not yet, not yet. So we just keep waiting because we just walking through those doors. He opens. Yeah. One step, one step at a time. That's great. Would you add anything to the BHAG conversation, Beth? No, I, we, I mean, our goal is very much aligned. We, they do. Yeah. You, you very, work through that. We do. We, we, uh, she, she used to live near me. So we, it was awesome. Now she's several hours away. <laughs> only two, it's only two. <laughs> only two hours away. So we do a lot of Zoom calls, a lot of phone calls. <laughs> Sometimes when, when we're both exercising, that's a great time for us to talk. We got, we got our, our ear pods in and, and we're chatting and, and planning for the day. And um, so, yeah, we, it's, it's, you know, we do as best we can to, uh, to not be face to face. I love uh, your friendship. I think that's just probably the best part of the story. Um, how do you maintain that um, and not get sideways when money's involved and decisions are involved, husbands are involved, <laughs> who might have different opinions about how to proceed? Or has it just gone swimmingly and you've never had to worry about any of that stuff? I think it's gone swimmingly and we've never had to worry about that stuff. I mean, to be honest, and I think it is, right. our personalities are very different. We have very different strengths, very different weaknesses. And um, I know there are times that Beth will come up with an idea and just, this is the greatest thing. This is the greatest thing, or this is the greatest person. And I'm thinking in the back of my mind, you have lost your mind. <laughs> And but I do the same thing. So I'm like, and I am do the sure same does. thing, right? <laughs> and I'm thinking, I'm not, and I am not a stand up and shout to the rooftop, hey, you're wrong. I'm right person. I am more, all right, well, we'll see. And that's what I'm saying in my head. And it's it's funny, there have been a couple of times, and I honestly can't even give an example now, but there have been times that we've circled back like a month later and Beth has a total different view on the original idea. And I'm, and I'm thinking, huh, I told you so, but I didn't tell her so. But I you didn't her tell so. her so. I didn't tell her. I thought, yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure. I, do think, I do think that whole iron sharpens iron. We definitely, we live that out every day and, and we are very honest with one another. Um, and the fact that we were friends before we went into business together it, that really helped. And, and I will say too, we have a great admin that it, really, we both really depend on a lot. She doesn't work a lot of hours for us, but every hour she works for us is gold. And so all those things that we don't like to do, or we're, we just don't have the capacity for mm -hmm. having her in our, in, in the mix, she's on all of our business meetings, all of our business calls. Um, so just having another voice in there, is helpful. And as we've said before, our husbands are key. They're key. They've been very supportive to you guys. Very. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. My and husband did funny. ask, and Beth, I don't know if I shared, I think I told you this, maybe I didn't, but my husband, Steve asked, maybe it was a couple weeks ago. It was that, it was those couple weeks, Beth, where we just were slammed. And, and I yeah. think I counted my phone calls and zoom calls. I had 35 in one week. And at, it, was, it was that weekend after that week, my husband said, so what does Beth do for your business? And I looked at him like, what do you mean? And he said, well, because you've been really busy lately. What is Beth doing? <laughs> and I looked at my husband and said, so are you, are you thinking that Beth is sitting at her house doing nothing? And Steve goes, well, I was just making sure. And I said, Beth is doing everything I'm doing. Only she's got other things that she does. 
and and I and I so I literally had to explain to him here's how we divide our tasks and here's right. how we we divide and conquer and here's where my strengths are and here's where Beth's are and we have stuck with it um you know for example I I write most of our blogs and then I get them and fix them <laughs> and then she gets them and fixes them because I do a brain dump and then I go in and I, then I do the writing and then I kind of check it and I hate editing and I hate, I read I it and I'm it. like, Hey, this sounds great, but I know I it's love a editing. <laughs> and I just like tag Beth in it and say, tag, you're it. And then she comes in and she cleans it all up and I'm not creative. And Beth and our, our admin do all the social media stuff. And they're like, well, what do you think of it? Like Christmas cards. They were picking out a Christmas card. They sent one this week. Which one do you like? I don't care. Pick one. <laughs> <laughs> and we're both going, no, the color's not just oh, right here. And, right? And, oh, and I'm like, like, it's green. Just go. <laughs> and he's like, I don't care. I just do not care. Yeah. So our, we learned our roles. We know where. Yes, we, very much so. You know, where we fit. Mm-hmm. And, and it works for us. Well, that was a good exercise with your husband, Steve, to talk about it out loud right you probably you probably have fallen into that you intuitively you've kind of divided it out it's good to take your intuitive and turn it into something intentional that other people can see too that's that's wonderful I am so uh grateful that it's worked so well for you guys and the help you're providing so many people um way to go um live in your purpose and helping a lot of people make a big difference in the world. That, that's wonderful. I would like you to speak to my listener right now, both of you. What is one thing you'd like to say to them today? If they're sitting there thinking, man, I know we could do this, or I know I could do this, but dot, dot, dot. What would you say to them today? Don't think it has to be perfect to make it. Mm. there's we've probably made a thousand changes some of them subtle yeah and some of them huge um in two years right that's great okay don't have to be perfect yep what would you add to that page i would add to that um we, we we have prayed over our business our clients the candidates that we're placing with our clients and don't ever doubt God, I think is what I would say that, that if you feel led to do this, if you feel a a strong enough passion for this, that there's a reason. Um, and you got to walk through that door. Um, it's, it's kind of the same thing as, as our, our son that I mentioned, um, with the cancer scare that we had when he was 24, who he is now 29. Um, Mm -hmm. He Thanks had two God. things, two significant events in his life, one at a, a car wreck at age 18 and then the cancer diagnosis at, at age 24 that were both very, very significant. And I remember um, both times my husband sitting him down and saying, you shouldn't be here today after this car accident. You know, you you flat out shouldn't be here. And, you know, cancer is a real thing and it can be scary and, you know, you shouldn't be here. And for some reason, God's taking you down this road and down this path. And there's a reason you're here. And there's maybe Mm -hmm. one person in your life you're supposed to touch. So that's, Mm -hmm. that's what I would say. If you're, if if you're given this passion, if you're given this dream, there's a reason. And if God's opening the doors and he might be opening them slowly, or he might just open a floodgate and you got to walk through it when it's open. And the reason why may not be revealed until you walk through it and down the path a bit. Yep. And then yep. you see it. Yep. That's the way it works. That's wonderful. Um, thank you so much for that. Where can people find out more about We Recruit Well? We are, our website is WeRecruitWell.com. Uh, we're on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. And all of them is, it's at We Recruit Well. Awesome. It's not we recruit good. It's no. we, we recruit English teacher, you would say no. <laughs> you English, English teacher. We recruit well. Well, I love it. One final question that I have for you guys. Gator or dog? 
Gator. Dogs, go dogs. Gator, go dog. Gator bait, gator bait. <laughs> gator. gator bait. <laughs> oh, I love it. Well, um, it, it appears this year that we have a better shot at the dogs winning the whole thing again than we yeah. do the gators. But, That's but for you know, sure. But it comes, it comes around, it comes around. It comes goes around. Yeah, you can't count on it for long. Yeah, it's it been does. a little bit of a dry spell for the Gators though lately. Oh, uh, it's been terrible. Yeah, <laughs> spoken by a Packer fan that's embroiled <laughs> in a terrible season this year. Well, you guys are delightful. Um, I wish you nothing but the best. Um, I, I will pray that uh, this year will be double. Um, and uh, that uh, you just have a great life together as you keep uh, pursuing this, as you're helping people. So thank you so much for taking the time today to be with us. Thanks yeah. for having us. It was a Thanks pleasure. for having us. Yep, oh, it really awesome. was. You have a fantastic day. Yep, you too. Hey, fellow dreamer. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Head over to my website, jeffmeyer.org, for all of the show notes and links. And when you're ready to move from overthinking about your dream to actually taking action on it, consider joining the Dream Accelerator community. Our clients are getting crystal clear on their dream with our Dream Generator Vivid Description 5-Step Process. They're discovering the truth about fear and how to use it as fuel to take courageous steps in the right direction. And most importantly, they are walking a clear path forward because they have made an investment in themselves to confidently realize their dreams. The results are so inspiring. Having coaching and companions on the dream journey is crucial. Remember, fear will come, fear will stay. Move forward anyway.